Yo guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another video. Today I'm doing another DIY and it will be for Jaden Smith's pants once again. The last two videos did pretty good, so I'm doing another one. This time though, I think that it's a combination of the first two videos, so it will be a little bit harder. But the pants I'm going to be recreating, I'm gonna put on the screen right now. I'm gonna call it like the inverted denim or something because it looks like he inverted them. And that's one of the big steps I have to do for these pants. Looking at the picture, there's a bunch of different panels I have to add to the pants. There's like dark denim with words on it, with font on it, there's like a pink racing stripe bandana attached to it. And then there's even some other tie dye kind of pants. There's a bunch of stuff that I have to put onto the pants. Now I went to the thrift store already and picked out some stuff that were pretty similar to his panels. There's some stuff that aren't exactly like his panels though. Like for example, that pink racing stripe bandana or whatever it was. I have this red one instead because I couldn't find any pink ones. But yeah, I got some swimming shorts, this red flannel, this pajamas, the black shirt dark denim and these right here are the pants that i'm going to be using these are levi's 501s size 33 34 so they will have the proper length at the bottom of the pant legs but also let me know what other diys you guys want to see if there's like a celebrity with some pants or a shirt that you want me to recreate let me know in the comments below if you want to see more jaden smith pants i'm down to do that as well hey we're back with another jaden smith video so here's how the pants look like before its surgery like i said before they're a size 33 34 but looking at the video they're kind of shorter than I originally thought. But regardless, we're gonna make them work. Since the jeans are a bit too dark, we're gonna bleach them to make them lighter. This time, I filled the bucket up with enough water to submerge the jeans, then added a mysterious amount of bleach because I just poured it until I figured it was enough, then I started it together. Time to bleach. I put the pants in the bucket and drowned it in different angles to get every inch of the pants wet. I'm not trying to have dark spots on my jeans, so I took my time for this part. I let the pants sit in the bleach in 30 minute intervals, coming back to adjust the pants to make sure everything was fully bleached. I did this four times, then threw them in the wash and dryer. Here's how the pants look like after all that. Now, is it just me or does it look like the pants got shorter? I don't know, but they're pretty good in color and there's no dark spots anywhere. But hey, this fit looking hella retro though, huh? Now, normally the goal is to make the pants look flush and seamless by hiding all of the quote unquote ugly parts of the pants inside of the jeans, but not today. This time, we're gonna give the real seam the limelight, which is why I'm calling these jeans inverted. Using a seam ripper, I ripped about two inches of the thread that held down the seam onto the leg opening. I did this to save time instead of ripping the whole thing. When that was done, I had access of the seam on the side of the jeans, which are ripped up until about the hip area. Now the flap on the inside of the jeans, we're going to fold it the opposite way so that it will be on the outside when we sew it down. To help the sewing process, you can iron the fold to reduce the crease. Unfortunately, for this DIY, we will be using a sewing machine because there's no way I'm going to hand stitch these pants together. I'm going to be walking through Target and all of a sudden my pants rip? <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Here's the pants tried on for the last time until the final product but bam, inverted jeans, AKA half the title of this video fulfilled. While wearing them, I guesstimated where and how big the panels on the left leg of Jaden's pants would be on my jeans and marked them with the pencil. This was for the denim rectangle panel and the pink panel below it. After a while though, I realized that the pencil wasn't visible enough, so I ended up using a fabric marker, which isn't ideal because it won't wash off since it's a marker for fabric that was designed to stay on your pants even after you wash it. If you zoom into the picture, you can see that Jaden has like a bleached faded knee area. Instead of repeating the bleaching process, cause it takes freaking forever, to get a lighter color, I just used a light blue fabric marker. Please don't judge me. But I filled in the area where I thought it would be. For the denim panel, I cut off a rectangular piece from the dark denim I thrifted. From there, I measured and marked where I had to cut. Here's a little advice when cutting fabric though. It's better to have more than less, so try not to cut so much on your first go. But the time has come. The time to start hand stitching. With the panel in place, I sewed it along the edges. I've decided to hand stitch rather than using fabric tape for example because I want to increase the longevity of each panel. I mean, I want to wear whatever I spend days working on, right? Actually, you're going to see me wearing them one more time, but we're going to try to figure out where the plaid panel will go. It may seem simple because I have pictures of him wearing his jeans, but it was quite the opposite actually. This was one of the steps that took the longest time. I was looking at multiple angles of him wearing the pants and it seemed like the panels were moving higher in one picture than lower in another. So when I thought I had the panel right in one spot, I looked in the mirror and it was like, <laughs> nope, that can't be right, and then made the necessary adjustments. I cut up the flannel I thrifted into the proper size. Jaden left some excess fabric hanging off, so that's what I did too. And of course, when everything was in place, I sewed it down. For the panel on the bottom of the leg, since I didn't have a graphic for it yet, I was really debating if I should use this boo graphic on the front of the black shirt I bought. I'm glad I came to my senses and used the blank part because if I did, hit that dislike button, but I didn't, so please don't dislike it. Okay, so I've been working on the jeans for a while now, and I already have two panels sewed on, and I hand sewed them. Okay, so that was my original plan. I was gonna hand sew all of the panels so that it looked good, it would actually stay on after the wash and everything. But I realized I kind of messed up. What I should have done instead of sewing the panel legs together already is to 
do that last so that I can use a sewing machine to sew on the panels and that will save me so much time. It kind of bums me out that I already sewed on the pant legs and they look pretty clean already but I have to do it all over again which I guess is okay since I will be saving a lot of time and my back would not be killing me right now. Yeah, so I got to undo all the hours I've spent already on the pants. You said hours? Yes, hours. Getting the right placement and hand stitching for me takes a minute, which is why I just decided to use a sewing machine. It's better to waste a couple hours in order to save more, and especially my back. I also realized that I should have been pinning the fabrics onto the pants to see how it looks like in the mirror, instead of stitching it already when I thought I had it right. It's been a while since I sewed something, but better late than never. The pattern on the back, I cut it to about half the size of a piece of printer paper turned horizontally and aligned it with the fabric on the front of the pan leg according to how it looked like in the pictures. I also realized that the panels I had already sewed on were too low so I had to remove them and readjust them. I pinned the panels back on and in the correct spot this time and finally sewed them down with the sewing machine. This was so much better than hand stitching it. Because I had smoothed panels up, the black panel was too short since it was supposed to touch the plaid fabric. I just cut another piece of the shirt and added that as an extension. Also because of the rearrangements, I had to fill in some areas. On to the next pan leg. Starting off with these shark swimming shorts that I'm going to be using in place of the tie-dye looking fabric used on Jaden's pants. I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty proud of this find because the area that I used for this panel was pretty spot on when it came to the general design and colors of the panel on Jaden's. You already know the drill by now and I don't want to keep repeating myself over and over again so basically I cut this and the pajama fabric I thrifted, pinned them down, and sewed them on. This part I think I kind of overdid it but I colored in the neat area. I'm just doing whatever was in the picture. I don't know what this is or who it is, but the big orange words on Jaden's pants say rusty. So I'll go on with it. For the font, I figured Kenyan coffee looked the most similar, changed the color to orange, and added a solid drop shadow. I guess it made the size of the font graphics to be about the size of half a piece of printer paper vertically. For the pattern graphic on the bottom of the left leg, I started with one oval and then copied and pasted five more. With the same anchor point, I rotated each oval to be 60 degrees apart from each other to get an even flower shape. I copied and pasted the whole thing multiple times to fill up the rectangle even if some sides were outside the box. To clean the outside, I just made multiple black box layers to cover it up. Now I'm not sure what the word is on Jaden's pants because I can't find any good angles of it, so I just used my initials instead. I printed out all of the graphics I made, which holy crap was a lot of ink, made a few cuts, made sure it was placed correctly, got it ready to be ironed because there's no going back from here, and finalized it. For the words on the upper left leg, there are words that say rusty wins at blank. I couldn't make out what the last parts were, so I just put some of my likes or interests. This part was literally the worst part of this DIY because I had to cut out all 173 letters individually with my X-Acto knife. You don't even know how happy I was when I finally got to the last letter. But once they were all in place, I prepped them carefully and ironed them down. Jaden had a list of 10 things on his back panel, but again, I don't know what it said, so I just put a list of 10 places I've been. To save time and to keep from being repetitive, this and the other graphics, I cut, placed, and ironed them down. If you made it this far into the video, here's a little break to show you guys my audience. The last little detail I had to do before I fully sewed the pan legs together was for the plaid panel flap. From the picture, it looks like he sewed the fold so that the flap will always be forward. So that's what I did too. It was also at this time that I realized that I cut the flap a little too short. But now that that was done, we're finally on the last step which was to sew the pan legs closed. AKA, we're done. That's gonna wrap it up for this DIY. I hope you guys enjoyed how the final product turned out. Me personally, I do like the final results, but the thing I would change, or the thing I forgot to do actually, was taper the pants. That's the reason why it kind of falls weird on my shoes at the moment, because of just like the size of the pant opening. But if I were to taper it in, it would look super clean, especially at its length. But that will be a super easy process to do, especially because the seam is on the outside now instead of on the inside. So I probably will do that eventually, but right now I'm kind of tired of these jeans. <laughs> now another thing, the panel where it says Rusty Wins at Blank, those letters because I put them on individually, it looks a little funky. Like it would look a lot better if I had an actual screen printing machine or something to put that on my jeans. But because I did it individually, it's like not really that even. I don't know, it looks a little bit too cartoony. And the straps on the back, I just tied those to the belt loops. I'm not actually gonna put those on if I do wear these out. But if you guys enjoy this video in any way, shape, or form, hit that like button, hit that sub button too. I'd really appreciate it. Sorry the video took a long time, but hey, it's out now. <laughs> anyways, I'll catch you guys in the next video. I'm out. Peace.